Hi there. Today we're going to do a teardown of the regulator on the Titman 48 cubic inch uh, HPA tanks. And we'll just start by looking at the items on the regulator. Uh, you have two burst discs, a high pressure and a low pressure. The high pressure burst disc protects the tank against overfilling uh, or when pressure builds up uh, because of heat that will blow. If you have a bad reg seat in here, and too much pressure is going out the reg, the low pressure burst disc could blow. So those are the two burst discs, 1800 PSI and 4500 PSI. Uh, turning on around here is a gauge. Uh, this shows the pressure in the tank, not the output pressure, but the pressure that the tank has been filled to. And then finally a fill nipple. You might be able to notice there's a filter. Uh, keeps dirt and debris out of the tank. Other than that, it's just a fill nipple with a 1 8 inch NPT port. All of these are standard uh, pieces, so they can be replaced or upgraded as, as needed. Uh, the burst discs, there's really not an upgrade to do other than maybe some black ones. Uh, the same with the gauge. You can change the gauge uh, if you break it. Uh, any mini gauge will work that goes up to you know, three, four, five thousand PSI would be fine. And fill nipples can be replaced with shorter ones, black ones. Uh, rebuildable ones, just about anything you want. The top part of the tank here is called the bonnet. Uh, the bonnet screws on, but it's held uh, finally in, locked into place with a set screw. And on the top is just an O-ring. Uh, this is a bottle O-ring, uh, standard as any CO2 or HPA bottle. So we'll just start by taking things apart. And the first discs come off with a 3H wrench. And it shouldn't be on there too tight. So that is the low pressure burst disc. Now the high pressure burst disc. Alright, and that is not going to work on the fill nipple, uh, but it does have beveled edges for a standard wrench, which we will do next. All right, so now we will take off the fill nipple. And it definitely is a bit tighter. There it goes. get started it goes fairly easily that is typically sealed with a thread tape or thread putty of some sort the burst discs if you notice don't need to be sealed uh, at least on the threads there it's the face this brass face that seals against the inside uh, bottom of that uh, bottom of that hole there, not the threads themselves. So we got our burst discs out, our fill nipple, and gauge. Gauge, we use our handy gauge wrench. And again, a bit stiff. And the only time you should need to take off your gauge or your fill nipple is if you're having problems. Either either something's broken or leaking, not filling. So this would not be part of any regular maintenance you need to do. There you go. And again, the threads are sealed on the gauge. All right. And where did that come from? We'll have to find out. Okay, so to pick up where we left off, I had taken these 
parts off and as I rolled the tank around an o-ring fell out. Well the o-ring is not on the parts list, it's not on the schematic. Uh, it cannot have come from either of the burst discs uh, because the burst disc face is what seats down at the bottom so it can't be either of those. Uh, it really wouldn't make much sense on a fill nipple, it doesn't fit here it doesn't slide inside. Really wouldn't do anything. <laughs> Bless me. Uh, the only thing that would really make sense is this is where the gauge was and is just a cushion uh, so that you don't mash in uh, the face of this gauge. I don't know if you can tell on the video, but this air port where pressure goes in here to be measured on the gauge actually extends out slightly there you go extends out slightly from the bottom so if this were to get screwed in all the way it's possible to mash that uh, so a o-ring there at the bottom makes sense that that would then set like that while it's in the regulator uh, probably not a critical piece uh, since it's not even on the diagram but there it is Okay, so we now are going to remove the top o-ring. Again, this is just a, your basic bottle o-ring. Nothing special. Comes right off. Keep plenty of those on hand. And then the bonnet is held in place. The bonnet is the top part of the reg. It's held in place with two set screws. Should be a 564, but it's not. So let's try 332nds. And not that either. So we will go try a metric wrench. All right, and we're back. And it is it not a metric. It is 330 seconds indeed that you're looking for here. So let's get the set screws off. One. And really, if you were just doing this to get the bonnet off, all you have to do is loosen them a bit. And it comes off. Uh, since we're going to go ahead and take pictures of these later, I'm going to completely remove these. So there are the two set screws, 330 seconds wrench. The bonnet, even though it has uh, bevels there for a wrench, just unscrews by hand. Okay, I've got a spring pack in here, which we're going to want to keep together and not lose parts. You can see right here, possibly, uh, the mark from the set screw that it dug into that aluminum a little bit. So that's all those two, is that just locks that in place to keep it from rotating out when you take it off your tank. Let's see if we can dig out the rest of this spring pack here. And that's it. So, in the top part of this rag now, I should press out. There it goes. Okay. So there's your uh, bare bonnet. Uh, nothing in there left you can see that hole goes straight straight through what pokes out the front is normally this piece this would be your valve pin and on the front of that is the valve pin seal and that's what seals up against the back of the back inside of the bonnet 
And that's what actually prevents air from leaking out the tip, is a seal right here. So there's your pin valve and your pin valve seal. And you've got your piston. I notice this is pretty greasy and goopy, and that's fine. Uh, this moves up and down inside here and regulates the pressure with this spring pack. And this is a uh, Belleville spring pack. I can take those off. And this is a series of cupped discs. And I don't know if you can see the cupping, but there's a Conve concave and a convex side and then they're paired together to make uh, spaceships basically and you start with a flat one out on each side and then a series of spaceships inside so you can build these spring kits uh, this type of a spring uh, larger and smaller so this uses a set number it's going to be eight in the middle, four sets to two, and then one in the front, one in the back. So it's a set of ten of those. And all those discs are identical. Uh, should you lose one, you can just replace uh, replace it one at a time if you need to. So there's our springs. And then we have a piston. We've got a two O-rings here, one in the front, or we'll call that the top, and one at the bottom. And inside, so this pin valve sets just like this. And you see that spring loaded. So when you screw it into your gun, this pin valve depresses and opens up a seal inside here. And that's what lets the air out. So that's that. Let's pull that spring out. There it is. It's jumpy. And there you go, that is that. That's your piston, and the two O-rings, spring, and the valve pin, bonnet in the front, reg, the rest of the reg at the back, and we will take that off next. All right, now we're gonna remove the regulator from the tank. Yours will not come off this easily. A, regulators are typically Loctited on by the manufacturer. This isn't a necessity when they're reassembled. Uh, the seal is actually created by this uh, O-ring here, and the pressure of the tank holds them in place. Pressure in the tank holds them in place, uh, so they don't have to be loctited on. But like I said, manufacturers typically do uh, loctite them on. So applying a little heat to get the loctite to break and uh, put it in a vise, and it came right off. So here you go, and there aren't any other additional parts. Well, there, here's this, this O-ring seal. This is the uh, reg to tank O-ring. And that's just a standard unit O-ring. And that's as far as the diagram shows to break this down. Uh, there is a an additional filter here in the bottom. And uh, it looks like that can come out. So we'll get a tool and take it apart even farther. All right, so we have an internal clip here. We're going to remove with the correct tool. Comes right out. And that filter should now fall out. And that's it. And now we've got a uh, clear, there it is, clear passage all the way through. So that's the end of that regulator there. And just to go over all the parts names again, if you're looking for something in particular, uh, this is the regulator body, and on the bottom is the regulator body O-ring, the filter and clip are not available separately. This is the piston, 
At the bottom would be the piston neck o-ring. At the top would just be the piston o-ring. You got the pin valve and the pin valve seat and the pin valve spring. This top part is called the bonnet. The set screws that hold it in place are the bonnet screws. This is your spring pack and I mentioned earlier that you could get those individually. Uh, those do come as a whole pack so it's a pack of 10 that you can get uh, if you need any replacements. That's just your tank o-ring. You've got your low and high pressure burst discs which are a 5000 psi disc and a 1800 psi disc also called a rupture disc your 5000 psi gauge and then you've got your fill nipple uh, we didn't take the fill nipple apart so let's take a last look at that let's move all these parts out of the way so the fill nipple has a piston on the inside which should tap out fairly easily if I can get to it. Surely. Alright, well, suffice to say that there is a piston here that when you fill your air, uh, this piston slides down and opens up. There's an O-ring on that piston, so you have a piston and a piston O-ring inside here on your fill nipple. Or fill nipple, I'm sorry, fill nipple check valve and then the fill nipple check valve o-ring. So when the air comes in here, that piston slides up and lets air go into your tank. When you stop putting air into your fill nipple, the pressure in the tank drives that forward and that seals right there so air doesn't escape through the fill nipple. And that's it. That's the end of the Tipman HPA 48 cubic inch regulator. Alright, since a leaky fill nipple air coming out right here uh, is fairly common, I wanted, wanted to go ahead and get this apart, and I did. So, out comes the fill nipple piston, and you see there's the, the O-ring on there, so that's the piston O-ring, and there's the empty fill nipple body. And that O-ring right there is what seals inside there, so if you ever have a leak out of your fill nipple, that's the o-ring that needs to be replaced. Uh, just remove this, take off that o-ring, put the new one on, and slide it back in, and screw it back onto your tank. There you go.